Hey there, my name is Frank Caron and I'm a lead technical architect at Salesforce. Today, I've put together a really simple demo to show you how you can use Salesforce DX alongside a really awesome, increasingly prominent tool for DevOps and pipeline management, Azure DevOps. Uh, we have a great partnership with Microsoft at Salesforce, and so I'm super excited to be able to use some of Microsoft's great tools alongside some of the great tools on the Salesforce developer front uh, to build an incredible pipeline for creating rich customer and employee experiences uh, for a customer using Salesforce. So really quickly, I've set up a very common scenario here, which is as a Salesforce developer, I'm building some components and building some backend application logic to create a specific user experience for my employees. Now, what you're looking at is VS Code, which is a great code editor. And I've gone ahead and built out a custom Lightning Web component uh, with some standard JavaScript, as well as a little help from some Salesforce magic and a backend controller class with Apex. So let's take a really quick look at what I've done here. I don't wanna do a whole LWC overview in this, but just to give you a sense of what's going on, I've got a really simple component here that's looking for a value that it's gonna to display to the end user. Uh, behind the scenes, I'm using LWC's JavaScript capabilities to actually make a request to my backend Apex controller and grab some data. And then my backend AQX controller uh, is actually just returning a value that we're going to pass through and put on uh, the screen for the user. Typical customization, I've gone ahead and I've done this work on my local machine. So once I've got this code in a position that I can test, I can actually push it to my scratch org as I normally would in the context of using Salesforce DX, and then open up my default scratch org. So as a developer, I can test with this very instantly available disposable environment uh, that my customizations are working okay and that everything uh, is going to work for the user the way I'm expecting. So here I can see that custom component and I can see that value that's coming into the front end from my Apex controller on the back end. Now, this is all well and good, and as I'm doing my development work, uh, I will continue to iterate. But what happens when it's time to release to a sandbox environment, or even production? This is where tools like Azure DevOps come in. Pipeline management and CICD tools allow our customers to orchestrate and automate the process of releasing their customizations through test and then ultimately production environments. And Azure DevOps is a really great tool for that kind of pipeline management. So what I've done is I've set up an Azure pipeline to listen for changes to a code repo that I'm working on. Now, all of these customizations that I've made here, uh, I have stored in a Git repository. And just to keep things in the Microsoft family, I've put that Git repository up on GitHub. Microsoft's public code repo infrastructure uh, for Git-based repos in the cloud. Now, what I want to show you is what happens if I actually trigger and commit these changes to a master branch. That's where the magic happens. In this case, I'm simply going to change the value from uh, this funny little Simpsons reference uh, to something more simple. And of course, if I'm going to update my controller, I better update my test classes as well to make sure that they're working as intended. Cool. So now to validate that this change works, I'm going to push it to my scratch org. And then I'm going to open my org and make sure that this local change works the way I'm expecting it to. Perfect. Okay, now I'm ready to release. So if I wanna change and push this to production, what would I normally do? Well, I'd have to create a package and distribute and so on and so forth, uh, but this is really where CICD comes in. So in this case, I am actually going to use VS Code's integrated Git tools to actually commit a change. And then I'm gonna push that change to my remote GitHub repository. Sweet, my job here is done. Now what's really cool is that in the background, 
Azure DevOps is listening for those changes on the master branch. And as you can see, I've used Azure to set up a pipeline. That pipeline is listening for changes on my GitHub repository. And when it detects those changes, it automatically kicks off a new job. That job is going to run automation to do all the work for me to actually create a connection in real time from a Linux virtual machine uh, to my Salesforce org based on some configuration in the pipeline, authenticate successfully, push the code up to that org, and then run the Apex tests that I have to validate that that code is working and ready for the limelight. Now, this is just one simple example of a pipeline. But with Azure DevOps, you can create some really sophisticated orchestration to actually run tests in a scratch org and then promote to staging, run tests in staging, and then promote to production, and finally run your production tests. And all the way through that pipeline, you can make decisions and bring in dependencies, all that cool, fun stuff that CI CD is all about. What's really neat here, though, is that on the Azure DevOps marketplace is a specific extension built for SFDX. And that made the process of setting up all of these tasks for authenticating and deploying and running tests a point and clicks exercise for me uh, as the sort of pseudo DevOps engineer in the process. So you can actually see that the automation here is running and check by check, we're getting ourselves ready to go into production. And once I see the tests have passed, I'll actually be able to log into my production org and validate that everything is hunky-dory. Cool. So how did we do this? Well, we're using, as I mentioned, an extension that wraps the Salesforce CLI as tasks within Azure. Azure DevOps has many different tools within its pipeline management capabilities, but one of them allows me to actually define tasks that my automation or my pipeline is going to run. So for example, using this pipeline as code approach, which is very common nowadays, uh, we have a YAML file defined that's going to use a set of tasks for SFDX to actually install SFDX on this Linux VM, uh, authenticate our org using some environment variables that are maintained securely within Azure DevOps, uh, deploy the source to the org, and then finally trigger Apex tests and validate test coverage after the fact. This is a super simple example, but it can be extended in some really cool ways. So I've gone ahead and made a GitHub repository public that you can now access through our Salesforce FSDC assets public repo. Super cool, super easy to set up, and a great example of how the Salesforce developer experience is not just about becoming a great Salesforce dev, but really about becoming an amazing web developer, period. Thank you very much. I hope this was as interesting for you as it was for me.